Hi everybody, my name is Drew and you're watching Drawing with Drew. Today we're going to be talking about a screen protector that I've been using on my iPad Air 3 that has assisted me in my drawing process. I've been getting a lot of questions about whether or not I use a screen protector and if so, what kind. So in today's video, I'm going to be just strictly talking about that. This video is not sponsored in any way. I will use my affiliate link so that if you do purchase it, then I will get like a four cent kickback from Amazon. So as mentioned, I've been using my iPad Air 3 three now for about three months and primarily I use it with my uh, Procreate app which I absolutely love and one thing that I have always kind of thought to be a ne necessity is using a screen protector mainly because uh, well a it protects the screen and B it creates a bit of a resistance for your pencil when you're using it so I did a lot of research online as to which one I should pick and the one that always pops up is a company called Paperlike, uh, but it's very expensive for a sheet of plastic. So I did what I always do. I went to Amazon and I searched out the cheapest one that I think that I thought would be comparable. And I came up with this uh, Chinese version. It is an eye cares protection. It's specifically formulated for the iPad that you have. So you can get it for different sizes. And I made sure to choose the matte finish. Now, some people say, why choose the matte over the glossy? The matte provides a bit more of a, a bite when you're using your pencil. It kind of glides a little more. It gives you a bit more of a textured surface so that it seems a little bit more like paper. Also, the there isn't as much glare. So this one cost me, I think it was $11 Canadian, so roughly $8 US or thereabouts anyway. Uh, again, you can find it in a link below. And it comes with two, believe it or not. And why you would want two, well, I guess, you know, you might want to replace it. Or in my case, my wife and I both bought iPad Air 3s at the exact same time. So we thought, hey, we would use them together. Now she has decided since not to bother with it. She is drawing quite a bit on there too. I've encouraged her to start drawing as well. But um, she feels like she doesn't need it on there. So I'm gonna do a blind test to see if I can tell which one is um, mine and which one is hers. The screen protector is so thin, it is virtually undetectable. Like you cannot see it on there. And one of the biggest complaints that you may notice when reading about it is that it distorts some of the color and uh, can actually kind of degrade some of the, the crispness of the display, which has not been the case with this one for me. I still find it looks super crispy um, and you would never know that you have it or not. So it comes like this. This is the one that I have not used yet and it's between two hard pieces of plastic. This kind of looks thin enough as it is and that's what I expected was actually the protector originally. But uh, what happens is you uh, first remove one side of it. It peels off. I'm not going to do it here just because I don't want to waste it. But you peel this one side of the plastic off and uh, as long as you make sure that your screen is clear and free of dust and debris and you can do that by using the alcohol swabs. Let me see, I've got them in my pocket, funny enough. Uh, they come with a, a lifting sticker and they also come with some alcohol swabs. So you can carefully prepare the screen surface prior to applying this um, piece of plastic. Now this is one of the biggest uh, drawbacks. If you don't get it perfectly on there, there could be some bubbles which can distort some of the images, but there are also solutions where you just kind of, you know, you you work it along. I had a couple bubbles in mine, uh, small ones when I did it, and I just kind of used a flat surface and worked it out, and then it was fine. It, I didn't even notice it anymore. So uh, the main thing is to get the dust and debris off there first, because once it's on there, it's hard to remove and then things get kind of messy. So at least if you're doing it for just one of them and you use this one, you'll have two. So if you mess one up, you can always try it again. So once you've peeled this piece off and you stick it down, then you simply just peel the other side off and it's almost like it's undetectable. You don't notice it on there. It comes with this squeegee card and that's what you're supposed to use. It's pretty much just like a credit card style piece of plastic that you can use to remove any bubbles that are in there. It says protection between screen and eye. Uh, it's HD clear, it is HD anti-glare, and I think it's working well. However, there are a couple little things I want to bring to your attention before you go out and purchase it. When you first apply it onto your screen, and it's provided you do it all as well as you possibly can and it looks good, you're going to notice that at first there is almost too much resistance with your Apple Pencil. It seems like it's you're dragging it along and it's kind of, um, it's like biting deeply. You almost feel like little crevasses in there um, and you're 
you have to go over top of them a little bit. And it took me probably three days of constant use before I kind of had gone over all the primary areas with my pencil and kind of pressed it down so it was super low that I didn't notice it anymore. So at first I was thinking I wasn't gonna like it and I actually thought I might actually remove it. But then after those three days, then it disappeared. That problem disappeared. The other concern is that, uh, you know, due to the, the resistance, uh, you're you're more likely to wear your nib down on your pencil. It'll take lo a lot less time, I guess, to wear it down. And now that I'm looking at mine, it almost does look like a, it's slightly, slightly worn on one side. If you buy the iPad Air, at least like mine, uh, it comes with two nibs, so you have a replacement. And also, you should know that you know the fact that your your nib is getting a little bit low is uh, it's not going to affect the pressure sensitivity or the quality of your drawing because it's actually the software it, within it that is creating that you know seamless beautiful experience. It's not actually the nib. You just don't want it to get so sharp that you can actually damage the device. The other thing I've noticed is that because this nib is actually a twist on twist off like this that I find that due to the slight bit of resistance, every once in a while, it kind of untwists itself, which makes it a little bit annoying. And at first I didn't realize that's what was happening. And it was kind of creating a bit of like a, a double click when I was pressing down, it was starting to become frustrating. And so every once in a while, I just give it a little tiny turn to make sure it's tight. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but it's something to be aware of. Okay, let's move on to the test now, the blind test. I'm gonna get my wife to bring down her iPad. Um, both of them are in the exact same style case. I'll show you. Okay. So I brought down a little eye patch here. But before I do that, I'm gonna get my wife to uh, get her Procreate app open. Okay, so we both have the squares open. Okay, let me just see your iPad for a second if you don't mind. So both iPads are identical in that the screen, the, the cases weigh the same. I won't be able to tell the difference when she switches them and passes them to me. Hers does not have a screen protector on it, whereas mine does. Okay, so I'll give you both open and you'll have to make sure you give me the right pencil because you have to use the same pencil that's been Bluetoothed to that device. I no, no longer can see it. Okay, I'm placing it down here. Okay, I'm just gonna just kind of feel it. Okay, I feel like it's smooth and to be honest, I feel like this is yours already. I can notice the difference. It's much faster glidier okay let me see the other one pencil okay yeah you know this I feel like this one's mine am I right oh my gosh that's incredible that is incredible I was wrong well there you have it folks virtually no difference so much so is it possible that your screen is gritty what's going on here this is baffling wow but you know what in some ways Yours actually is grittier. Like it's, I feel like it doesn't, this one glides a little better. Huh, I much, I do prefer the, the mat, even though I felt like it was slidey. Hmm, that makes sense. Like yours, I feel like there's a bit of like too much resistance at weird spots. Huh, like it's slow and it's fast and it's slow and it's fast, whereas this seems to be more consistent. Okay, would you like to try it? Okay, she's not looking at us. She's just uh, standing in this position. Keep your eyes closed there, Missy, and I'm gonna pass you one. Okay, it's coming around. The iPad, or the pencil is on the side. Here we go, see how it is. Feels like mine. You're used to it? Yeah. Okay. I'm certain. You're certain, interesting, okay. And I'll give you the other one. A little more flowy, a little more free flowing. A little more like, free flowing. Yeah, like it. Like I feel. I'm pretty sure that's mine because it does. I do feel like it sticks a bit. This is very smooth. Huh? Open your eyes. You're correct. Wow, interesting. Well, there you have it, everybody. Uh, and a very interesting result. I thought that, I guess I was just assuming when I did it that the smoother one would be that one, but it actually was the one with the protector on it. And we both enjoyed this better. Even though it seemed a little glidier, it uh, was more consistent. It didn't kind of have weird stops while you were going. It didn't get resistance in weird spots. It was all fairly, you know, uniform. So there you have it. 
interesting result. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Again, you can follow the link down below if you want to check this one out yourself, or you can try out different ones. And uh, in my next video, I'm going to be talking about expanding your storage on here using a third party device that I picked up on Amazon so that you can expand you know your 64 gigabytes to a lot more than that and I might even talk more about my case here and which one I think I would recommend so stay tuned for that thanks for watching see you in the next one